Here are the three different confidence intervals that we're going to be using when dealing with one parameter. The first two deal with the population parameter mu for population mean. The last one is for a population proportion p when you have qualitative data instead of quantitative. So these are the first two formulas, almost identical. The s replaces the sigma as an estimate of that, or sometimes in the first one we'll use s as well. But basically the large sample, n is 30 or more. When dealing with quantitative data, we use a z. So we're going to use the z interval. So these are the calculator functions here. For all of them, we hit the stat key, arrow over to tests, and then find the proper function that we're going to need. They're all labeled pretty well, so it should avoid some confusion. Small sample for the mean mu, so when we have 29 or fewer data points, we're going to use the t interval because we're using the t distribution. And finally, large sample for p, n times p hat and n times q hat being at least 15, uses the one prop z int. Prop standing for proportion, z is a distribution we use, we're always going to use a z, an int meaning interval. One meaning the number of different proportions, there's just one. All right, we'll refer back to this. We, I've got a couple examples on the next slides. All right, for the first one, it says a Pew Research Center poll of 1,501 randomly selected U.S. adults showed that 70% of the respondents believe in global warming. All right, we need to calculate a 95% confidence interval and use that to determine if a majority of adults believe in global warming. All right, here is our calculator. All right, as discussed, we're going to hit the stat key and we're going to arrow over to tests. So arrow over to tests. And we're going to look for the one, this is a proportion, since we're dealing with uh, percentages, that's typically a clue. We're looking for the one prop Z ends. So one prop Z test, no, that's not what we want. We need to go down some more. So one prop Z int, it's A on the TI-84. All right, so this is gonna take the value of X and the value of N. Well, we're given the value of um, P hat, which is 0.7 since it's 70%, and we're given N of 1501. So since p hat is x over n, we can multiply the two together to find x. So 1501 times 0.7. So this will give us the value for x. All right, now we have a problem. We can't have 0.7 of a participant. So we need to round this. I'm going to make this uh, 1051. So my guess is the 70% was rounded in the first place. So we need to go fix that. and our end value is the 1501. Confidence level is 95%, so this value is a 0.95, and that's all we have to enter. So we go down to calculate, hit enter, and this is our confidence interval. So we are 95% confident. The true proportion is between 0.677 and 0.723, or basically 67.7% and 72.3%. You can see the actual value of p hat is slightly over 70%. It's been rounded to 70%. All right, so based on these results, can we safely conclude that a majority of adults believe in global warming? A majority would indicate more than 50%. This entire confidence interval goes between 67.7%, 72.3%. The entire interval is above the 50% threshold that we're looking for, Therefore, we have evidence to indicate that a majority of adults actually do believe in global warming, according to this study. So that's the first example. The second one, this is a sample of students from a statistics course were polled regarding the number of hours they spent studying for the last exam. All students anonymously submitted the numbers of hours. Uh, and then there were 24 individuals in one section of the course polled. The data was used to make inferences regarding other students taking the course. We need to assume the students are from a normal distribution and the data are below. So these are the different data points as to the number of hours each student 
was studying for their last statistics course. We need a 95% confidence interval and then what does it tell us but so these are the different data points we have 22 data points we're looking for a mean therefore we're going to have quantitative data now let me show you we're going to use because it's 24 small data uh, small uh, number of data we're going to deal with the T so stat tests and T interval all right, when you're dealing with quantitative data, you've got two options. You can either enter the stats, so you need X bar, the standard deviation, and N, and then of course the confidence level, or you can input the data into a list. So data, you tell it what list it is, and you just run it. Now, I have entered all this data into list one to enter the data. Again, stat, enter, all the data is right here. Okay, scroll down to see the rest of it. But, so stat tests uh, number eight is the inter or sorry t interval. Leave it on data if you have data, and simply go down to calculate. So the confidence interval, the t interval, we have n is 24. All the data points are there. The standard deviation came out to be uh, about 5.6. And the uh, X bar, the sample mean was 10.92. So we are 95% confident the true mean number of hours that students will spend studying for that particular exam was between 8.55 hours and 13.28 hours. And that's how you would interpret that. So we have a, a sample here that we're interpreting um, all people or all students taking that particular test. All right, the last one, we have a random sample of 30 households selected as part of a study on electrical usage, and we count the kilowatt hours for each household in the March quarter of 2006. So the average was found to be 37.5 kilowatt hours, and the standard deviation was 81 kilowatt hours. So we're assuming the standard deviation is unchanged and the usage is normally distributed. Calculate a 99% confidence interval for the mean usage in the March quarter of 2006, and that's for everybody. So we have 30, that's a large enough to be a large sample. We're also told that it's normal, that's not necessary though. So we're gonna run the Z interval. So stat, tests, and number seven is the Z interval on this calculator. Now we don't have individual data, we don't have the 30, 30 different households and exactly what they had in each. So we're going to hit over to stats, hit enter. The standard deviation calculated was 81. X bar is 375. N is 30. And the confidence level in this case is 99%, so 0.99. So we can be 99% uh, confident that the true mean number of kilowatt hours found for all households will be between 336.91 and 413.09 kilowatt hours. And that's how you use the calculator and uh, calculate and interpret confidence intervals.